I'm Vincent Guinness. I am a, a doctoral researcher at the Vrije Universiteit Brussel, so here in Brussels, um, in the Department of Applied Physics. And I'm actually doing research on the combination of transformation optics on the one hand and a material implementation using metamaterials on the other hand. Perhaps to, to really explain what transformation optics does, it, it makes sense to first define metamaterials. Um, and metamaterials as defined by uh, Professor Pendry, Professor Sekulis uh, Smith in the first few years, um, is actually a nanostructured device whose electromagnetic properties, as opposed to traditional materials, are defined by small constituents. And in traditional materials, the electromagnetic properties are defined by the individual atoms, whereas for metamaterials, the uh, electromagnetic properties are defined by nanostructured building blocks. And by accurately choosing the properties, the orientation and the size of these building blocks, the meta-atoms we call them, uh, it is possible to create electromagnetic properties such as an effective permittivity, a magnetic permeability, and these things cannot be found in nature. So you can really create your own electromagnetic properties from scratch. And this actually has, has proven very, very successful. Um, for instance, it has become possible to uh, interact with the magnetic component of light at optical frequencies, which is simply impossible when you consider normal materials. Um, and as a result, it is possible to create media with a negative index of refraction, which is something the community has been looking for for several years. Transformation optics is some kind of formalism that uses a geometrical background uh, to, to design devices based on uh, metamaterials. And, okay, well, technically transformation optics uses the four main variants of Maxwell's equations under coordinate transformations, but I, I know this sounds quite esoterical. Um, so I, I think it, it, it can be most instructive to explain transformations with just an example. And, and, and the best example, according to me, is, is the invisibility cloak, which was also the first example that, that was introduced by Professor Pendry uh, in his first paper. If you think of it, invisibility cloaking is, is, really, um, is really a problem that is very difficult to solve with traditional optical design methods. I, I wouldn't even know how to start doing it. Um, but in the first paper, um, it has been considered that when you, when you just consider light propagation through empty space, through vacuum, then we all know that light beams will follow straight paths. That's, that's quite, quite logical. Um, but then when you express this same physical phenomenon of a straight path of light through, through vacuum, and you express this on a curved coordinate system, then this straight path will appear to be bending, and it will, it will follow actually the coordinates and, and, and the transformation of the coordinates that you're implementing. Now this is quite a mathematical trick actually that we're playing here. We're just expressing something in a new coordinate system. Now transformation optics simply answers you the question what kind of materials you need to implement that really mimic the same kind of behavior that you can do by a coordinate transformation of your, of your coordinate lines. Um, and this is actually quite interesting because um, it, it offers you a very geometrical intuition in, in designing a certain application starting from really a distortion of your coordinate lines. So um, what, what, what it actually does is it, it builds an equivalence between two different spaces, transformation optics. On the one hand, you have a space which doesn't contain any materials or simple materials, but let's say it contains no materials, and you express it on the background of a very strange coordinate system. This we will refer to as the electromagnetic space. On the other hand, you have a physical space, um, a space which contains non-trivial materials, but is expressed in a very normal coordinate system. So you have an equivalence between a coordinate transformation in, in one space, the electromagnetic space, and a material implementation in the other space. And now it appears that when you, when you um, implement a general coordinate transformation, one like the one that you need for invisibility cloaking, one that bends all coordinate lines around an inner circle, then it appears that you cannot simply use traditional materials. You really need materials that, that do extraordinary stuff, materials like metamaterials, because you need, for instance, a magnetic component, a non-trivial magnetic component, or anisotropic materials, or materials that become very, well, whose permittivity and permeability becomes very big or very small at certain points. And this is actually how transformation optics and metamaterials go hand in hand. There is like a subtle interplay. Uh, transformation optics starts from a geometrical distortion of the coordinate lines, and then it tells you what kind of metamaterials you need to implement this in a real life situation. Optical forces, it has also been suggested that they can be used for really implementing all optical 
uh, device actuation, which means that you have an integrated system. For instance, the, the typical setup is two waveguides, uh, two silicon waveguides, for instance, in which light is propagating and these waveguides are very close apart. The, the point is that you can really actuate these waveguides, you can make them move by just pumping light through them. And that is uh, very interesting and, and that would generate all optical uh, device actuation. So researchers have been investigating how we can uh, enhance these optical gradient forces uh, through several mechanisms. Um, the, the one, one of the most uh, typical examples is to use resonators where you can uh, enhance the optical power at a certain region in your optical system and because optical forces are um, they are proportional to the optical power therefore also the optical forces will be enhanced when you have a, have a resonator in your system. Um, so this can already enhance your optical forces quite a lot uh, but we have been investigated in, in, in our research how the, the, the geometrical formalism of transformation optics in combination with the material implementation of metamaterials can be used to enhance optical gradient forces even further. And to do this we actually started from the consideration that indeed optical forces are very large when the waveguides are close to each other, when they are adjacent to each other, but they become small when they are far apart. So what we need to do is implement some distortion of the coordinate lines in the electromagnetic space that really pulls the waveguides closer together. It actually folds the coordinates back onto each other such that in the underlying electromagnetic space the waveguides are adjacent to each other, they are next to each other. And then in the material implementation, the waveguides can be far apart and we just simply need to add some metamaterial cladding next to these waveguides, such that in the physical space the waveguides are on a reasonable distance from each other, but the resulting optical forces, and this was quite surprisingly actually, they are the same as in the underlying electromagnetic space. So it is possible to translate the very high optical forces that occur at small separation distances to longer separation distances through metamaterials. Uh, we envision that when optical gradient forces would increase even further, they would really open up the route uh, towards uh, all optical uh, device actuation. And this is, this is one of those holy grails in, in optics and photonics because if you would be able to, to manipulate matter with light, then you also are able to manipulate light with light because when light is propagating through these waveguides and you can also manipulate how, how these waveguides are configured then you can also manipulate how much light is transmitted through these waveguides. So this can be inter interesting for add drop filters, for transmission blocking, um, for all, all these things. For, so in first instance I, I'm thinking that in, in the telecommunication industry this, this might be interesting but as it goes with, with these fields, with, uh, definitely in the, in the metamaterials community, you see that quickly these things spread around and, and find applications where initially you think uh, it, it is not useful for, but eventually they, they become very useful.